welcome back to the show. Now we have a couple of cuties who used to be shaggy dogs, but not anymore. And we just love pets with human names, Lisa. Please tell us about these two. This is Nick and Chad. The one in Kathy's lap there <laughs> sitting down. That's Nick. This is Chad. Uh, they are two and four years old. And they came in uh, from a call where there were too many dogs in the house. They had lived with eight other dogs, and the owner needed help and wanted our help. So luckily, these guys were surrendered to us, and they got their first grooming probably in their lives. So as you can see right now, they've got kind of a short summer cut, but they look adorable in it. And um, they are going to require continued grooming. This isn't just a one-time thing. So they are in the buddy system. They need to stay together. They do best together, the two of them. Um, but keep in mind, that's two that you need to keep groomed. But keeping their faces free, cleaning their eyes, that's tri trimming toenails, you can do that at home, but they will need to stay groomed. And uh, they're friendly as can be, super social. They jump up for treats and they want to just sit in your lap. They keep each other company or they'd be a wonderful company, one for you and maybe one for your wife. Oh my goodness, yes, two for the price of one. Yes. Thank you so much, Lisa. And now, like we mentioned earlier, every rescue organization here in the Valley is so important to work together to be able to save the lives of all animals. And so we are so excited today. We have Caitlin Garcia from the Phoenix Herpetological Society, as well as our very own Michelle Ramos of AHS. Ladies, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having us. Okay, now, first of all. This little one has definitely caused everyone to absolutely lose it here in the studio. Please introduce us to this little one. Yes, so this is Clover. He's not as fluffy, but just as important. Right. Um, and in Arizona, it is illegal to have any crocodilians uh, as pets. So um, Mr. Clover here does education with us at the sanctuary. Oh my goodness, yes. We definitely don't want anyone taking these guys home because they are... They have very special needs. Definitely. Now, for anyone who's not um, familiar with what Phoenix Herp does, can you tell us about the life-saving work that you guys do day in and day out? Of course, we work very closely with the Humane Society on any reptiles that might need uh, to be saved. So we, so we take in reptiles from all over the country, not just Arizona, and we give them a place um, for sanctuary, use them for education, and help them find new homes. Oh my goodness, yes. And we actually took a little field trip ourselves out there. It is so amazing. If anyone Thanks. hasn't been out there, make sure you go out there. But we're actually bringing Phoenix Herp to the Arizona Humane Society through a very special thing for your kids. Michelle, can you tell us all about Wild Wonders Camp? Absolutely. We're excited to tell you this is our second year, partnering with our great friends at Phoenix Herp Herpetological yeah. Society. Um, they bring all their wonderful animals out. As you can see, we have very large alligators, <laughs> so bigger <laughs> versions. Um, very exciting. It even attracts our staff in. We have all kinds of um, tegus and monitor lizards and just all kinds of wonderful animals. We also partner with other wildlife groups that bring in other birds of prey um, and other wildlife um, species that the kids can have some fun with. We just want the kids to see broad spectrum, the Humane Society, all animals matter. So we want to preserve our wildlife as well, and, and we want to in instill the importance of coexistence for all. Of course, and speaking yeah. about that, all wildlife and especially just all life matters, can you talk about what it means to really instill compassion for all animals and all beings in young children? Why is that so important to both of these organizations? Absolutely. Yeah. The foundation of everything that we do is to make change for the future, not only for these children and people, but for the animals that we're in, are trusted in our care. Um, so we want to make sure the kids understand the, the relationship between our existence and the animals, the wildlife in particular. And we want to also encourage them to not only take care of their pets, but learn how to coexist with our wild neighbors, because sometimes the, our pets can be a danger to them, and the wildlife can be a danger to our pets as well. Instilling compassion makes these animal, these children want to do change, make change, make a difference for these these animals, getting them up close to an alligator and letting them pet it and get excited and they have that personal connection with it, it makes them want to do more. It motivates them for change. Gosh, that is just so cool. And now, Kaylin, I want to ask you one more question, just because I see this on social media a lot. When someone sees a wild animal that they think might be hurt or be in need of help, what do you recommend? Because I think sometimes people think that they're doing something that's right, but might not be what you guys recommend. Right. And with reptiles, each species is so different. So thinking that uh, an animal is a tortoise versus a turtle, they need much different care. So if you take one in and don't know exactly what you have, it can be 
a lot worse than actually helping that animal. So we have a hotline number that you can text us pictures to and you know call the Humane Society and they can get in touch with us as well. So we have lots of resources on our website to use. That's amazing. Well, ladies, thank you so much for being here. And if you guys are interested in signing up your little ones, make sure to visit azhumane.org slash camps. If I was little, I would definitely sign up for it. So make sure to sign up for your little ones. And now we have another little one who I think is just absolutely adorable. Um, if Tom Hanks was here, I think he'd be yelling, <laughs> Wilson! <laughs> Please tell us about him, Perry. You always steal my lines, Kelsey. Oh, man, Darn. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, this little guy was brought in by a good Samaritan to the Arizona Humane Society as an injured stray, and we got him back to our Second Chance Animal Trauma Hospital and discovered he had some severe wounds to his head and his neck. We really wanted him to go to a foster home, and we were unable to secure any foster for him. So we uh, kept him in our, our hospital for over a month to get him well. You know, we did a, obviously a good job. We do it all the time, but it is not the ideal situation for a pet that needs uh, some recovery time from healing wounds. So we are in desperate needs of fosters, and we've mentioned this many, many times before, is how rewarding it can be and how it expands the walls of our shelter. So please consider uh, being a foster. We are also in need of dog walkers very, very uh, desperately at both our South Mountain and our Scottsdale PetSmart locations. If you can go to our website azumain.org slash and then look at the tab ways to help us you can find out all the information you need to help a guy like little wilson here oh my goodness so cute and we're going to meet a few more adorable constellation kittens in just a few minutes so make sure to keep it tuned right here to pets on parade